Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Empower Hour brought to you by the Empower Plant by Basic Brooks. We are so excited today. Uh, we have got an amazing guest. She is a local treasure uh, with WCTV. She's been there for so many years, and so many of us have uh, watched her grow up or have grown up with her. We welcome today Lenitra Bennett. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> hey there. Hey there. And you're green because uh, happy yes. St. Patrick's Day. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I had to represent, I, I, and green is actually my favorite color too. So I love St. Patrick's Day. Any excuse to put on green, I'm with it. <laughs> All righty. I love it. Green's a good color. It's a color yeah. of uh, happiness, spring, money, yes. all kinds of good stuff. I love uh, it. Well, welcome. Hey, welcome. <laughs> I want to go around and introduce our panel real quick. We have got Kia Thomas back, our PR director. Hey, Kia. Hey, everyone. <laughs> we have got Betsy Brown, our newest uh, law partner. She's back today. Hey, guys. Yeah. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Now, what is it with you and the Irish? You got anything to do with that personally? Oh, yeah. I'm like 80% um, Irish or something oh, like that. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and I love it. It's like my favorite day of the year. So I got this shirt in Dublin. Oh, 2003. And I have worn it every year on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, it's it. starting to show its age, but I still have it. I'm still going to wear it. <laughs> I love it. Well, hey, it speaks well to you that it uh, still fits you. That's great. Mm -hmm. So good Not quite you. the same, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rose Caswick back. Welcome back, Rose. Oh, hello. What are we drinking? We are drinking, uh, we're going back to our book. I went off book a couple of weeks, but we're back to our book uh, with a coffee martini. Uh, we didn't have any martini glasses, so this is what we've got, but it's in honor of Christiane Amanpour, since we're talking about journalists and, and women in the news. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Not exactly now, Irish what is coffee, in this? but it'll do. Hmm? Am I detecting Guinness? What's in this? No, it's um, it's Kahlua and vodka and coffee, espresso. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. No, I thought it was some kind of Guinnessy thing because of no, Irish. No, it's not okay. quite Irish coffee, unfortunately. Oh, well, we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend it. <laughs> but, well, I want to welcome you again, Lenitra. And to start off, if you will, just telling us uh, what you do day to day, what you're doing now, and, and why everybody recognizes your beautiful face. <laughs> Well, thank you. I am uh, the anchor, co-anchor of WCTV's Good Morning Show and Eyewitness News at Noon. So um, our morning show starts at 5 a.m., even though I have to be there at 3.30 a.m. Yes, very early in the morning. And um, so, yeah, I get there and I start preparing for the show, such as reading over scripts and uh, just getting ready and we start live on air at 5 a.m. And it airs until 7. And we also do the Fox 49 morning news as well. So that airs on the Fox channel from 7 to 8. And then, um, and then yeah, and then after that, you know, kind of help work on some things. And then I do the noon show as well. The noon show is from 12 to 12.30. That show is only 30 minutes. And then I finally get to get off after that. So I, I typically work about 3.30 a.m. till about 12.45-ish, one on a good Reporting, you know, interviewing people, going, covering, breaking events. Not as often. Every now and then I do get to uh, still go out, but not, not very often. And I do do a, a monthly segment called community classroom and that's when i'll interview a teacher in our region somewhere in south georgia north florida and um it's 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 pretty neat because they are there's this website called donors choose and donors choose helps teachers get anything they need you know so say you're a teacher and, yeah. and you say you know I need a printer for my classroom or we don't have enough books whatever it is you can put that request on that website and ask people for donations well we have partnered with them and so I'll interview a teacher that's on that list and we kind of help them get the donations that they need 
and we started this in 2020. And of course, that was a very hard time for everybody, the entire world. And of course, especially teachers, you know, trying to navigate the pandemic. And, and we've heard the stories before. It's already difficult uh, being a teacher anyway and having materials and getting what you need sometimes. And so it's, it's just been fun helping them get what they need and it's, it's just been awesome so i do get to do that um that's every third wednesday of the month called community classroom that's awesome because i'm a big advocate for teachers uh, mm -hmm. when my kids were growing up and they'd come home and complain about a teacher i'd be mm -mm, i don't want to hear right. about it. anybody takes care of other people's children when <laughs> and i know how you can be so right. i don't need to hear anything else <laughs> sir or madam um no I, but i but to me, it's almost like advanced volunteerism mm -hmm. because they, they get a salary, but it doesn't begin to cover a fair value for their labor. And they come out of pocket so many times. Um, mm -hmm. My former daughter-in-law is a teacher. And I was like, you know, I think she thought it would be a great job to have because she'd have, you know, some of the afternoons and the summers to raise her own children. It'd be wonderful. But, you know, everything around it, she was cooking food for them during mm -hmm. FCAT because she didn't want them to be hungry and not be able to perform their best. So, you know, her set Sunday was spent cooking for, you know, all these classes. So it's, they come out of pocket for supplies. They come out of pocket mm -hmm. for so many things. They have to be, um, you know, they're counselors, they're babysitters, they're teachers, you know, there's so many things we ask them to do social work. So any kind of recognition and help for teachers, I'm a hundred percent here for it. I love that. Um, let, me, let me go around to our panel real quick and hear from some people. Rose, do you have any questions for our celebrity guest this week? Yeah, I'm just um, wondering if you can give us a little bit of history on how you came to be in that position. Was like it your goal to, to be on air or uh, what, what path did you take? Because that's a pretty yeah, what was your What's your story? Yeah, well... I started out in the background. I was an associate producer and it was 2001. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are like, wait a minute. You know, I am older than most people realize, but I started back in 2001 as an associate producer part-time. At that time, I had just graduated from FAMU. I graduated in 2000 and I didn't get the job there until 2001. And I was still working on Families Campus and the Instructional Media Center, as well as Publix. I had started working at Publix in high school. So I was still holding on to those two jobs since WCTV was only part-time at the time. And my ultimate goal was to be on air, but I just w needed to get my foot in any kind of way I could. So I, I took that part-time job as an associate producer and the associate producer was the one that just kind of helped out with certain things, it helped out with the editing and so forth. And then when I became a uh, full-time as a full-time AP, this was back when we still were on tapes. So I was the one in charge of every single story that you saw on television. It was on a tape and I had to put that tape in a deck. If I didn't put that tape in a deck, you wouldn't see it on the news. <laughs> so that was a very- Important job. Oh man, it was very important. It could be stressful because if I didn't do it right, it was, you know, it was pretty cool. So anyway, I did that for about a year and then I became the producer of our 10 p.m. show. Um, you know, I mentioned Fox earlier. We have the Fox 49 morning news and we also do the Fox at 10 p.m. So I used to be the one to produce that show. And then finally, my news director gave me a shot and he knew that I was interested in becoming a reporter. He would let me go out and shadow some of the, the reporters we had. And I used to love it. Um, girls like Sarah Grady Ackerman, you know, some of you may still be familiar with her. She does our Moms Every Day segment and she used to be a reporter anchor at the station. So I would go out with her sometimes. And, you know, I told my boss, this is what I want to do. And one day he said, okay, Lenitra, this is your shot. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me the position and that was right when they were start transitioning into, we used to call it a one man band. Now they've gotten all fancy with it and they call it a multimedia journalist, okay. <laughs> MMJ. That's basically means you, you have to do it yourself. <laughs> To do it all <laughs> so yeah you have to do it yourself where we carry around the equipment we do the shooting the writing the editing the interviewing we do it all so 
I was one of the first ones, actually, I was probably the, the first one to be full time in that one man band position. And, um, and I, I loved it, you know, so I, I moved from producing to reporting. I was originally assigned to our outskirts, um, mm -hmm. Taylor, Lafayette, to Swanee counties were my assignment. I used to have to drive to those areas every single day, back and forth, covering stories there. Um, it was tough, but I loved it. I love yeah. it. So yeah, so that's how I started. I've reported for years. And then as you know, now I am the uh, co-anchor of the Good Morning Show. And and that was a goal of mine too, to become an anchor, even though I was borderline with it because I loved being out in the community. And mm -hmm. even though it was rough carrying that equipment around and just being outside, whether it was a hundred degrees outside, 20 degrees outside, regardless, I, raining, I had to be out there. That was tough, but I loved the people and I loved meeting new people and learning new things. And that's what was so exciting about it. So I would tell myself, eh, I don't know about the anchoring thing. That's not me to just be sitting inside all the time, you know? And I was like, I don't, I'm not sure. So there were a few positions that opened up and I never really went for it until recently. So um, I've been doing this. It's been over a little, little over two years now. And I do love it. <laughs> I do. I love it. Well, you're very good at it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, what, what's your undergraduate degree in? Broadcast journalism. So you were always kind of wanting yeah. this path. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I when, went to specifically. When? Yeah, tell me how. Yeah, I um, I always loved it, and I was always interested in the field. And um, once I realized that there was a degree for that, and once I saw you know some of the people that I admired on TV, and finally got enough courage to realize, hey, I can do this. This is something that I can do. And so I went for it. And, and I always wanted to go to FAMU anyway. Uh, born and raised, I, I grew up in Tallahassee. And I was just one of those people that didn't leave. And I didn't want to. That's why I didn't leave. You know, I grew up just loving FAMU everything. So I already knew that that was the college I was going to. And then to find out that they had an award-winning uh, journalism did. program then I was like, wow. And, and I really, I learned that there is a difference, you know, when you talk about journalism program, they specifically um, hone in on that. It's not general. It's not just mass communications or, you know, just something that's really broad. And at FAMU, it, it breaks down. You have broadcast journalism, magazine journalism, newspaper journalism, um, graphic arts, and the marketing, all of those things. And so I, I was like, wow, I'm obviously in the right place. Let's do it. <laughs> I love that. We're very uh, fortunate. Our um, Empower Plant, uh, Empower Hour, and our uh, Come Back Stronger shows are produced by a very talented man that we have been lucky enough to have with us. And he ran a newspaper for Soup to Nuts, mm -hmm. reporting everything about it. Um, so we're, we're, I appreciate that knowledge because I don't have any background in that. And so mm -hmm. you know, to see what the behind the scenes, I really appreciate and respect what you all do so much more of uh, having learned about it. Uh, Betsy, what about you? What are your what are your thoughts, comments and questions for our guest, Lenitra Bennett? Yeah, so I I was wondering, um, do people recognize you around town? <laughs> And yeah. if so, do you feel like the pressure to always be on in case you run into one of your fans? Yes, she does. <laughs> I, yes yeah. and yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And to be honest, it still feels weird. Um, I've been on air, like I said, since about 2004, you know, even with the reporting, people recognized me and, you know, even now, and I don't mind it, but I still Feel like I'm, I'm weird about it you know there are two I don't know how to do it sometimes like if I I can hear someone talking you know whispering behind me behind my back you know and sometimes I'm like okay would I embarrass them if I turn around and say hey I hear you <laughs> should I wait for them to approach me you know and, and so sometimes I feel guilty if I don't approach them I, you know because I'm I, 
you know, I'm thinking, okay, I'll wait for them. I don't want to embarrass them. So I'll wait for them to approach me. But then sometimes they never would. And then I'll feel bad. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should have said something. They probably would, were afraid to say something. And so yeah. I should have said something. And so it, I just feel so awkward about it. But I, I absolutely do not mind when people approach me, you know, and it's so funny, the ones that are very open and vocal about it, they are hilarious. You know, people will call my name. And because I'm from from here and worked at Publix and, you know, have a big family. And sometimes I'm like, okay, do they know me from TV or do they know me? Because yeah. people will call my name as if they actually know me. And they go, hey, Lenitra. And I'm like, hey. And I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, is this my mama cousin? <laughs> that, that is, that is weird. You, you probably never take 11 items to the 10 item checkout. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. yeah, I do try to watch my P's and Q's. And, and it's funny because uh, my mom has to remind me of that sometimes, to, to be honest. I, I, I have to say when I'm concentrating real hard or, you know, just my rest. It, everyone knows I love to laugh. But when I'm not smiling, my face does this other weird thing where it may look like I'm frowning. And so my mom's like, stop it. You look like you're frowning. I'm like, oh, sorry. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I guess people may be watching. They may think I'm mean, you know, but anyone who comes up to me and speak to me, they, they know I'm not mean. And I, I think I surprise them sometimes. I'm, I'm probably more down to earth than they may realize. And, yeah. um, you know, you know, but that's just my down. Home. I can't help it. That's it's, my down home and I actually told myself I would try to behave with you all I'm like oh I'm gonna be talking to lawyers today I gotta try to be proper <laughs> but I you know I just have to be my down home self so you have to forgive be me if I laugh and you know kiki or whatever get too comfortable with you I can't help it it's me <laughs> you can't get too comfortable here but Betsy you better get ready for it lady yeah, you, you know you put your face on a bus and yeah. all these billboards and tv and mm -hmm. stuff like that um, and people do treat you differently. Yeah. It's, it's a perceptible difference. I don't know, Rose, do you ever experience that at all? Uh, every once in a while, I get recognized. It's not super, super often, but I also don't, you know, talk to people super, super <laughs> often. If I, can I also it. don't um, engage with humans. So. Yeah, but uh, I have been recognized, and it is always jarring when it happens. Mm -hmm. so. what's, what's jarring to me is when somebody will say, um, oh, hey, Dana. And then you go, oh, God, who is that? Why yeah. don't I remember them? And you're like, yeah, I'm face blind you realize, as it is. I'm like, you I know, that. You've just made them comfortable enough with you and encourage, because mm -hmm. we try to encourage people to, to approach us. So it is weird when somebody goes, hey, Lenitra. And you're like, right. how do they know me? Is that my sister's friend from college? Who is right. that? But exactly. uh, yeah, it, is, it can be surreal. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah, it's a better Better yeah, I, I don't mind it though. Yeah, I, I do appreciate the people who go ahead and say, "You don't know me, but I just know yeah. you." Thank you like, for thank that, you know. <laughs> thank you for just saying that, so I won't rack my brain wondering. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Do I know them? Yeah, I, I love yeah. people just come out and say, "Hey," and then I go, "You don't know me." You know, I just know you from TV. Okay, yay! Thanks. <laughs> don't make me struggle. That is helpful. <laughs> Yeah, what are you thinking about and wanting to know from Lenitra today? Well, I mean, of course, I know who she is. She's from my alma mater as well. We kind of took the same um, career path. I just went a little extra ways, you know. Never knew I would be here at a law firm doing PR, but I did do broadcast journalism as well. Mm -hmm. um, when you were leaving, I was coming in. So, oh, okay. Okay. You know, one. But um, one of the biggest things I think I want to talk about, one, it's being national, you know, women's month. How do you feel that women are being represented in media? We always see men. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we love art, but that's the <laughs> first entry you saw, right? And even if you go to CNN, you think about Don Lemon, you think mm -hmm. about, you know, all of those people, even on Fox, you know, mm -hmm. you, you will see the men anchors over the women. So what strides do you think the media is doing in regards to, you know, the representation of women, period? Right. Yeah, well, we do, yeah. Um, traditionally and historically, of course, this was always seen as a, a male field for the most part. You know, the ladies like, oh, they're just there to be pretty or what have you. I think that things have come a long way 
And it is amazing to see women in these bigger roles. You know, we have our Nora O'Donnells and our Gail Kings, actually the face of shows. And that's awesome. But you are correct. A lot of the times, the first thing we think of are the men. And so um, I'm appreciative of the fact that things have changed over the years. And I'm grateful for that because I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Um, but yeah, we, we still have some work to do because yeah. you know what I noticed? And I don't know if it is the, the male, female thing or if it's just the fact that Art Myers was there way longer than I was. But I noticed once he announced he was retiring or when he left, I got this question a lot. Oh, do you get to replace him now? And I'm thinking, no, we were co-anchors. We are the same. We were you know, the and, same. Yeah. Someone has and, and, to and, replace and, him. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, I'm already here. You know, like I sit yeah. next to him. And I, I, I had this very heated discussion with one woman one time. And, and a part of it was probably my fault as far as I was a little offended. But I, I have to realize, well, you know, some people trigger, just baby. don't know. But... I, I started thinking, well, dang, did people think I was his assistant? You know, like, like I finally made it to the anchor desk, but people still looked at me as lesser than Art Myers. And I, I can't tell you how many times I still get that question. Oh, ooh, do you get to step in his shoes now? And I try to explain. I sat side by side with Art. We are co-anchors my title is co-anchor he was not my boss he was not you know my whatever I mean he was not my manager he wasn't the anchor and I was just as lackey we were equal I said I literally sat next to him both of our names are on that show yeah. so that may be a part of it I just you know people still may not be used to a woman being able to sit in the same seat and wear the same shoes as men when it comes to seeing us in the media. A hundred percent. And since we're going there, <laughs> I have a follow-up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Television is a visual medium. Yes. Yes. You need to look cute. <laughs> you need to be something somebody wants to put their eyes on. Mm -hmm. Period. Um, even if you're telling somebody World War III, they want to hear it from a pretty face <laughs> or a man they trust. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is there, are you finding that there's some sort of a natural shelf life for women in front of the camera, which is possibly not as present for men in front of the camera? Like you said, there's a, a, a um, you and Art co-anchors, big age difference. Mm -hmm. um, but WCTV also had uh, Anna on for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Frank, of course, you know, had a, a very long career. They're not pushing Julie Montanero out the door. She's right. been there many years. So I think it speaks well of our local station in regards mm -hmm. to how they have treated that issue. But mm -hmm. how do you feel in terms of positions of advancement for women in media who are in front of the camera? Mm -hmm. uh, I think advancement is is it is there you know like i say I, I think that things have come a long way when we have women not only being the face of national shows right now but we also have them in management um but you're right it, locally here at wctv we have a good reputation of not just kicking the women out just because oh they're not they're no longer that cute they had a few birthdays right yeah. exactly because you know that is what we used to be told mm -hmm. you know even coming into this field we were told well you know um you know you may be pretty right now but as you get older you may have to find something else to do and it's yeah. like we were trained to have that thought so did anybody um, ever say that to you overtly, though, Lenitra? Like when you were, because when I, I've told some stories about when I was in school, people gave me some guidance to help get me through uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get specific. It's not about me. But did anybody ever tell you whenever you were in school? Now, listen, 
I know you want to do this and you're cute as a button, but you know, about age 40 ish or so you're going to have to go. Did, did you just perceive that? Or did someone actually articulate that to you? Yes. Don't, don't call anybody out. You don't want to. Right. Right. <laughs> hear me share with us about that. Yes. It, it was articulated as if that, you know, this is how it is. You know, they would say men can do this until they die, you know, as long as they want to. It's okay if it's cute and handsome or nice for them to grow old and gray, right? When we yeah. see men grow gray, it's, it, it looks uh, debonair and, and, yeah. and they look so well, wise. Well, it makes them more trustworthy. Mm -hmm. and now exactly. I trust them even more because they've got a lot of gray hair. Right. But then, you know, we were told when women start looking older that people would look at us like, ew, she looks old. You know, why is she still there? What is she doing? I don't want to look at this old lady. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we were straight up told that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. And, mm -hmm. you know, numbers speak and you look at viewership and you look at, um, you know, what people want to see, whatever. See. But, but it's also because we're not working hard along the way to imbue these women with more credibility based on their reporting, their actual intelligence their tenacity, all the things that make them exceptional people. I do see a shift in that though. Like you said, Gail King, yeah. you know, she's on a, on a, on a morning show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure she's wearing Spanx every day. <laughs> okay. I, I, right. the are now too. This is what I love. I love this though, because we are so vain as a society. We have so many reality mm -hmm. TV shows. Men are becoming insecure about their looks. <laughs> at the same right. time. Are. we're all going to be a bunch of neurotic freaks but at least we'll all be in it together it won't right. just be women thinking that they're fat and and you know yeah, it's not just us yeah I, i'm half joking about that i like parody but i'd like it to be in something positive and uplifting instead of us all feeling like right. shit exactly um, but let's let's go back to uh betsy and rose does anybody have a, we're going deep on this let's get in yeah i i, ahead, I do if you don't mind um lenitra have you seen show the morning show on apple tv no i wish I oh had. girl it is so good it is one of my favorite shows that you i've seen watch it i okay. watch i watch a lot of stuff on tv but <laughs> it, it's so good and it's got jennifer aniston reese with mm -hmm. ritherspoon and um the guy from the office his name steve carell oh, okay yeah. and it, it's just so funny and it's so like it goes very deep Real. And, and it's it's all about that morning show culture mm -hmm. and how men were allowed or have been allowed to uh basically just do whatever they want um harass women <laughs> engage in whatever behavior they want while women are being held to the highest of the highest standards mm -hmm. and um it, it's just a great show and i just wanted to know if you'd seen it because i would i would kind of want to know if it's based in reality and <laughs> oh it is i mean it, you know it is and lenitra watch it and come back on this show okay yeah. okay is that important yeah. that, you, that we right that yeah we, you unfortunately don't... i have not seen the show so i can't say as far as it being accurate but i i can say that i have not experienced um any negative things as far as my my male counterpart art myers was actually a wonderful person to work with yeah. and, and and you know even going back to what we were saying before about you know people feeling like he was over me and looking down on me and so forth he never made me feel that way i think it's right. just the perception of other people he yeah. absolutely never made me feel that way from day one he treated me as if I were his partner and he treated me with respect so I can say I have been blessed in that manner um so yeah I, I haven't seen that show but as far as being disrespected or anything I haven't experienced that personally so I can say I, I have been lucky in that well you know Betsy what I think about when you bring up that show uh because okay first of all I don't like this uh, Jimmy Facing, my law partner, told me I need to watch that show. And he goes, you are so much like Jennifer Aniston's character. I'm going to keep I'm like, that in mind. I don't, now that I've watched it all, I'm like, that's not a compliment. Uh -oh. Okay. She, uh -oh. she was, I think she's significantly, her character is significantly more neurotic than I am. Mm. And I do believe her ego is bigger. If that's possible, I believe hers <laughs> is a stoach bigger. <laughs> stoach. 
um, just to start, keep that in mind. <laughs> but but here's my thing. This is where I want to go to Betsy um, and Lenitra on this. Basically, all these men were being outed. It's it's honestly it's it's a loose variation, not that loose, of the Matt Lauer Today Show debacle. Mm -hmm. And so Jennifer Aniston's character is the co-anchor with uh, Steve Carell's character. He gets busted like everybody else in the Me Too thing and all these things are coming out you know, about it and they're starting to look at consent differently. It's not just an inner office affair anymore when people ha are in, have a big uh, power differential. But at, one of the things she struggled with so much and at my age, I do too, is the feeling of being complicit in some of these things. Like you had to, you're, you're just trying to go, you, you don't want to be in the middle of it. You just want to advance your career. You just want to move forward and you just go, yeah, this idiot, he screws everybody, <laughs> doesn't screw him first. Oh my God, he put his, you know what, in a rattlesnake's mouth up. Uh, and you just laugh <laughs> about it and you just ha ha ha. And uh, really there, uh, that is a form of being complicit. Mm -hmm. um do you experience anything like that what i mean my lawyers you know what i'm talking about kia i mean when we as women in a workplace environment see these things happening that we know are not really consensual mm -hmm. really consensual relationships but we look the other way or we don't want to be perceived as oh she's got to come in here and moon all the fun and we don't want any other women mm -hmm. you know well, I, want to, mm -hmm. I want to talk about that in the media generally well, again, I, I don't know if we are just this weird special group of people <laughs> or maybe we are a good group of people. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're just all just such an awesome group that I have never experienced that. You know, I don't know if it's being naive or what, but I've never seen anything that I would consider out of line. You know, we all have weird senses of humor, <laughs> you know, as far as, you know, just you know, we love to laugh at, you know, weird things, but um, as far as sexual harassment or anything along those lines, I've never yeah. seen it. And, or someone in the environment, goodness. yeah, who's yeah. just a cad and you just know mm -hmm. it. I have coming up through so many law firms mm -hmm. and I'm considerably, I mean, well, just a tad older than you, I guess, um, <laughs> considerably. No, I, I'm 54 <laughs> years old. I've, I've been around when that was going on. And if you wanted to move up in the world, you better keep your mouth shut mm, uh, yeah, and you yeah. feel bad later, you know, and then you're like, shit, I was a part of that. And so mm -hmm. it's just, to me, it's just one more burden that women have to carry that men don't. Now right. I'm responsible for your own bad behavior. Geez, when you get, will you ever get off my back? That's how I feel some of the time. Betsy, what do you think about that? Well, I think the moral dilemma is complicated, especially for that particular character, because if she had called him out or called out the things she was doing or he was doing, and I think she had willful blindness, um, yeah. she her career would have tanked too, because her career was tied to his career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, if she took him out, it was going to have a direct effect on her career. And she couldn't... Worked to hard that. to get where she was. Yeah. Why does she have to go down? You know, on his a tough yeah. one. It's yeah. a really tough one. Yeah. But I think she she um, rationalized it by thinking, well, these are adults; they're making their own decisions. Nobody's getting hurt. Mm -hmm. But you're right; nobody ever thought about the power differential. Mm -hmm. You don't think about that, and you also don't think about uh, the pioneer aspect, as I describe it, which is when you're the first or one of the first women to get to a certain level you can't just be a normal person you right. are representing you are a spokesperson you are a leader and it is up to you to shake things up and, and a lot of women a lot of people of color a lot of people who are the first of anything that's not mm -hmm. you're pretty much a white dude mm -hmm. in america getting anything they're like look man i'm just trying to to do my thing i never right. signed up to be the poster child i never signed up to be right. a crusader. I just want to do my thing. Why am I now got an extra burden of having to correct your behavior and go down on the ship with you? It's just another boot on the neck of women. And I don't think mm -hmm. it gets enough recognition. And Betsy, you're correct. I think that show really shines a light on it. Wow. wow. I, I have heard of those things. Wow. That's very interesting. I, I can see that though being torn and, you know, maybe not wanting to rock the boat because it could jeopardize your self, your career, your life. Wow, that's interesting. 
Well, it kind of, I think, feeds on the environment. Okay, what kind of environment are we talking about? We're talking about attractive people, smart people who are elevated in status beyond anything any normal person ever experiences. It's just an extraordinary set of events. And then you have to have all these people supporting you in you know, this fabulous life that you have done. There's no way that doesn't go to your head, make you think you're privileged, make you think rules don't apply to you and in turn, you know, make you take advantage of that power. And whether you're, I don't think that's gender-based. I think uh, men have a greater sex drive than the species need, uh, needs. I've said that before, but I think that it's a power thing more so than a gender thing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, what else does anybody want to talk about Kia? Cause I've got some questions, but I don't want to talk to them. I'm just going to add on to that. That's a whole moral compass type thing. You know, like, do you really sit there and say absolutely nothing just because you're the pioneer and you're trying to hold on to, you know, your job. I think that you are definitely the one that should be stepping up and saying something mm -hmm. because then other women will follow suit and you'll get that right. support. But to, I was just adding on to that. Dana, that was mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, but I wanted to also say, considering all the major stories over the past year, what would you want to cover and why that you haven't? That I haven't? Um, I'd love to do more stories of triumph. Um, come back, come back stronger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'll come back show on your on your station. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to show more of that. Um, I do believe it is important to show the struggles, though. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with telling those stories. And I love telling those stories only because and seeing there's a a misconception that a lot of people have when they say, oh, well, the media just likes talking about that stuff to exploit people or, you know, to make people look bad. Well, no, the purpose is to shine a light on those issues so that hopefully something can be done about it. So um, there's absolutely nothing wrong in my view of doing those stories of struggle because that is important to tell those stories. Um, but but I do believe it is also important to, to tell the other side of it, to show when people come out of it, maybe yeah. show more follow-up and say, okay, well, this person, you know, just two years ago, they were here, they were down here. This is how they felt. And now two years later, look at them now. Right. And to be able to let them show their voice so that the ones who are still down in the valley struggling, they can say, I can be in their place too. All I have to do is keep going, keep working, and I too can do that. Yeah, there's a path through it. Mm -hmm. I like that. How about you, Rose? Yeah, I mean, I was just like, uh, all the women lawyers here just went to a, a conference over the weekend where one of the things that stood out to me um, was to not let yourself be a sidekick. So I wanted mm -hmm. to, to circle back to what you were saying about your co-anchors, you're equal. Um, right. But people just perceive like, mm -hmm. I guess she's a woman, she must be, you know, the second banana. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I just thought that really uh, synced well with what we had just been talking about. Yeah. Um, and on a, on a lighter side, I wanted to ask you about your routine. Like you have this very unique routine of getting up super, super early in the morning. So how do you maintain that? How do you maintain your sanity and uh, your self-care with uh, that strange sort of schedule that you've got? Yeah. Great question. I will be honest. Yeah, I will be honest and say that it is still a struggle. Yeah. It's so weird. Even after two years, when my alarm goes off in the morning, I'm still like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this can't be real. <laughs> It is so hard. And I used to be a night owl. And even when I had to be to work at nine and 930 in the morning, it's so funny. I'll tell you this story. When I first went to my boss and said, hey, okay, this position is open. I want it. You know, and so we had that conversation. And he said, well, Lenitra, you know, it's early hours. Are you sure you're up for that? And I told him, I said, look, 
I don't even like getting up to be here at nine, <laughs> but I do it. <laughs> and I was like, so trust me, if whatever time I have to be up for that position, I will do it. I am the type of person that will do what I have to do to get the job done. I don't care how hard it is. I'm going to do it. So it's very tough still. Um, I try to go to bed early. But again, those old habits still kick in. And, you know, my body's like, girl, you know, you usually don't go to bed this early. What are you doing? And so, <laughs> but my goal is technically I should be in bed by 6.30 p.m. to get eight hours, but I that's impossible. So my goal oh, yeah. is usually around 7.30 and I kind of work from there. And um, I try to go to bed early and I get up at two something so that I can be at the station at 3.30. And once I get off around one, I don't take a nap because my thinking is if I stay up, then I will be able to go to bed early to go to sleep. So normally after work, I'll run errands and I go walking and jogging um, pretty much every day. So by the time I get home and maybe relax for a minute, then it's like, okay, time to go walking get that out of the way, come home, take a shower. I eat dinner and try to relax in front of the TV for a little bit. And then I get ready for bed. So it's pretty much, it's pretty much my life. It's, it's interesting because I thought I would have more of a life. Oh, I get up early. I got plenty of time to do things. Like, no, everyone else is at work. <laughs> you know, Nobody so, to play with. Exactly. No one to play with at that hour. So yeah, that's pretty much all I do. Go to the grocery store and get off and go jogging take a shower, eat dinner, go to bed. <laughs> Rose, what was your first question? Oh, Did you have uh, to- no, that was it. Okay. <laughs> I was just making a point about the sidekick thing since that had yeah. come up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I can elaborate like- a little more on the sidekick thing too. I can elaborate a little more going back to that. Um, when I first started working next to Art, and I don't, I don't think I realized it, but he would tell me, you know, sometimes like, hey, Lenitra, make sure to speak up, you know, make sure to jump in there. It, it's okay to, to talk. And so maybe it was that thing that we were taught that, okay, oh, I, I, I got to kind of dim down a little bit because of the man and, and oh, I, I can't look too bold or, or you know, I, I got to be second fiddle to the man. I, I don't know if that was an unconscious thing that I was yeah, doing. Was. We're not socialized uh, it, to jump in there like that. Right, yeah. You, you, know, so, you doubt yourself. You don't know mm-hmm. whether you should do it. But most of the yeah. our impediment or a lot of our impediments are in our heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, but he would come to me and, and, and I thank him for that, you know, because he could just still, you know, let me be quiet and just take over and like, okay, I'm the man. So I'm, I'm going to do all the talking. Yeah. I'm the head person, <laughs> but he didn't do that. You know, he'll pull me to the side and say, Lenitra, you know, when we're talking back and forth, just jump in there, you know, don't always wait for me to be the one to talk first, or, you know, you don't have to just sit there. If Rob and I are talking, jump in there, get in there yeah. and talk. And I'm like, okay. You know, <laughs> once he made me realize, first of all, that I, I wasn't doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. And, and, you know, and I felt more comfortable being able to take that position and, you know, being a little more forceful and like, yeah, I fit in too. I'm supposed yeah, to you be do. here. That's right. <laughs> awesome. That's and, awesome. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? I have some I want to ask her too. Yeah. Anybody? Until later. Betsy, you got one? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, so- so did you work from home during the pandemic? What was the pandemic like for you? Because I remember oh, watching, again, the Today Show, and mm-hmm. they did work from home for a while. Yeah. Right? They, they did the show from, like, their living rooms right when mm-hmm. we were getting there. So what? how did you guys handle that? We, um, for the most part, we did not do that except for art. They did allow him to anchor from home, um, you know, to because of his age to be honest and um you know he had a wife at home and so just to be on the safe side they let him work remote and I still went into the station and I didn't mind I I really didn't take that as oh well how come he gets to be the one to stay home right (laughs) 
it's probably <laughs> easier to do it from the station because they're already set up for it. Exactly. I didn't have to worry about trying to fiddle with all the technical stuff being at home. You know, it, it was just just normal for me. You know, like I was used to going to work every day anyway. So and I was like, hey, why not still do it? So the pandemic. You get was- 30 minutes more sleep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's true. Now that part, you know, when I did have the quarantine, um, actually back in June at the beginning of this year, yeah, I did have a point where I had to quarantine. And so I, I did it for the first time where I did anchor remotely. And I, I will have to say that was nice. Roll out of the bed. And like, okay. <laughs> Roll out of bed, slap five yeah. minutes worth of makeup on. Exactly. That, that was nice. Just put my top on and sit there. I, I did enjoy that. I have to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but at the time of still going into work, um, and I think that did help me as far as some of the, the blues that maybe some people felt being isolated for the pandemic. The fact that I was still getting up every day and going to work that allowed my life to to still feel normal and still have that regular routine. That's awesome. I want to ask you something. I want to ask you three things, okay? Mm-hmm. Who's the most famous person you've interviewed? Who's the most challenging person mm-hmm. you've interviewed? And what's the most memorable interview? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, those are so good. Yes. Oh my gosh. Let's see, the most famous... Um, I did interview Magic Johnson. Hey, that that was pretty awesome. And um, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Wow, yeah, okay. that that was a very interesting experience because that was during the Trayvon Martin march. Yeah. Okay. And so when we had the march to the Capitol here in Tallahassee, you know, everybody was there. And I will say, man, kudos to Benjamin Crump. Of course, you know, attorney Benjamin Crump, he was Mm -hmm. there with Al Sharpton. And, you know, I I was reporting the story of the march and I was there by myself, even though it was a huge national story, but they still had me there all by myself. You know, (laughs) meanwhile, stations from all around the state, you know, they had their big camera guy carrying their stuff for them and everything looking all big time. And so I'm piddling along, just trying to get, you know, get the story and doing this with my camera. And so everybody was getting the interview with Al Sharpton and uh, his handlers got to the point where they're like, okay, no more, no more, Uh, get back, get back. And so, and I was so close. I was almost there with my camera and my microphone and his people pushed me back. And, but Benjamin Crump stepped in. He was like, no, this is home team. You, oh. she's gonna get the interview he was like nope she gets the interview him and I was like oh my gosh and, you know I nice. love that. Hey. I, you know hey. just shout out me. shout out to Ben wow. yes. love it. Mm-hmm. shout out I, to Ben Crump for that yes I would know I'm worried about Reverend Al I think he's too skinny yeah I think he, I think he needs to eat some I've been following yes. him since Tawana Bradley in the 80s yes. I, I don't want him like he was but right. I'm worried about it <laughs> Um, yeah. what's your it's most challenging tiny. interview what's so your most tiny. challenging a uh, most challenging oh um I'm not sure I, I don't think I've really had too many bad ones she's, she's such a diplomat <laughs> tell she's been in front of a microphone before no. <laughs> she knows how to spin it off okay I'll let you go Betsy, you know, what do you I, want to say, Rose? Lenit- oh, no, finish up, Lenit- obviously. You know, I was just going to say, you know, just maybe the tough ones, um, maybe not necessarily even being dealing with someone big or famous or anything. I think one of my toughest or scariest times when I was in Taylor County once, and, you know, I was dealing with a, a sad story, and, you know, it was a tragedy. And, of course, the people didn't want the media there. And for the first time, someone was really, really stern and ugly with me. And, and that kind of shook me a little bit where, you know, this guy was like, get out of here. And, you know, he was really mean. And it was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, okay, and that's I'm not like Taylor people. County. They're usually very welcoming, friendly, Southern people. Right, exactly. And that, that's why it jarred me so, because, I, you know, I, 
I, I loved, you know, even though, you know, most people are like, oh my gosh, you got to drive to all those counties. I loved it. You know, I used to say, man, those are my people, you know, <laughs> yeah. because I'm, I'm such a, a Southern girl that, you know, I think they all relate to me. And so I, I love being in those communities. So mm -hmm. that one particular day, you know, like I said, I can't admit that it was a difficult story. You know, we were in a, a hospital, um, but it was still weird. No one had ever spoken to me like that. And I was just like, uh, uh, sometimes, know. sometimes uh, I think reporters and people in your industry, they're not, you're not treated like a real person. You're treated <laughs> like your job more yes. than a person performing a job. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think, I think that requires maturity and mm -hmm. perspective on your part to say, this isn't directed at Lenitra. This right. is not directed at this person's perceived you know, invasion of privacy or whatever it is. Right. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to go to our panel um, one more time for a wrap up uh, as we end our program today. And then I'm going to hit you with that real hard question I told you. About. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's not hard. It's just, it's just one of those things you're not prepared for. That's why I know it's going to be great. Okay. okay. Who wants to go first? Kia, you go first. Absolutely. Um, since we're closing, thank you so much, Lenitra, for being here. I know since I have been at FAM, I've been watching you. So I remember you being in the rain. I remember being in the cold. I remember being in the heat. I remember all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a great aspiration. So one of the things I just want you to close with is what are your next aspirations in life? You know, we always want to continue to keep scaling. Um, and we talk about that here too. You know, the great thing I really appreciate about being here is that Dana and the rest of the partners here are always talking to you us in regards to how we're going to build on our life mm -hmm. from here on out, you know? So right. what's your next steps in regards to aspiration and how would you relate that to any woman that's going to be walking in a path, you know, that they're going down and especially in the career field that you're in that's so dominated by men and even right. the field of being a lawyer and what have you. So if you could just, you know, expound on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question um, because I you know, have, you know, I was kind of torn on that. Of course, in this field, usually the name of the game is to move around and, you know, just go, 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 go so that you can try to keep getting to the top. And, you know, we see the top as the bigger markets, right? Yeah. That's usually the name of the game when it comes to this profession. When you're in media, you know, television news, oh, you want to get to the big TV station. Right. And so, and, and that, that is, right you know that, that is what people do um but i didn't do that because i genuinely love being here mm -hmm. um and so one one may say okay but it's only tallahassee and and you're not really going anywhere i i, I okay you, you have the right to your opinion but right. I love what I do. <laughs> Sorry, right. listen. Agree. You know, it's the capital city of the third most important state in the most important country of the world. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. So you, you I know, think that's a pretty good gig, lady. Yeah, yeah. And so it 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 hurts sometimes, you know, when it comes to this field. You know, people because oh, since I'm not in Atlanta or Washington D.C. or L.A. or Miami, it's like oh, you know, okay. But I, I'm, I'm good with that. Um, yeah, as far as being in a big time station, that would be nice and making more money. Yeah, that would be nice. Pay less money. <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I do honestly enjoy being here. Yeah. I love what I do. Um, if it were possible for maybe me to do anything on the side, maybe that's something I, I would consider. Um, but because I love, you know, when sitting here talking to you guys, like I, I love this talk show vibe. I, yeah. I wouldn't mind doing something like that one day, to be honest. I, I, I would love, yeah, I, I would love to to do a talk show maybe one day. Yeah. And then as far as, you know, and the other part of your question, as far as what would I tell others, um, you know, who may have aspirations, I will say, if it is right for you to yes, move. Yes, go. Yes, strive for those bigger stations. Strive for those bigger markets. You know, do what's best for you. Um, 
yes, that is considered to be successful to be in the big markets. <laughs> right. So if, if, if you feel that that's what's right, if you feel that's what you want to do, then go for it. Please do whatever your heart's desire, but don't do it just because someone else says you should. Right. Absolutely. You know? if, if you feel comfortable somewhere, it's okay to stay. If, if that's what you want, do what you love. And mm -hmm. this is a field that you have to absolutely love to do. Yes. We go, right? You yes. know, you know, we at the beginning of the conversation, we talked about teachers, right? And what did Dana say? Right. They don't get paid for what they go through. It's the same thing with this job. I compare it to being a teacher all of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you have to love to do. If you don't love it, get out <laughs> because yeah. it can be because you hard. can't fake it yeah you can you know but just follow your dream though if it is in your heart please go for it because you can do it if you want to oh i love it yeah um let's go with rose what are your final thoughts and and uh round up comments tonight yeah i just wanted to thank lanitra for being here and wanted to see if there was I mean, you've covered thousands and thousands and thousands of stories. Mm -hmm. Is there one that sticks out to you either because it was early in your career, was the big local story or is there one? Yes. Okay. Let me tell you this one. It's really weird. <laughs> and it's funny because I was just telling Julie Montanero like two days ago, I told her that I always use this story as an example because randomly it just happened to come up. Um, Julie was talking about no, I think I don't know why the subject came up, but I think Abby was reading something about um, a sturgeon and she was like, oh, my gosh, that's a huge fish. And then Julie said, yeah, someone did a great story about sturgeons here one time, a long time ago. And I was like, that was me. <laughs> and she was like, oh, yeah, I remember. And I said, yeah, I said, that was about 15 years ago. I said, but Julie, I said, you know what? I always use that story as an example as one of my favorite stories. So let me go ahead and tell you guys why. <laughs> so, I'm here for it. All right. So, okay, so jumping sturgeons are fish. And yeah. so they have this hard shell, you know, just for anybody out there who may not be familiar, but they, they have a hard shell. And so they literally jump up out of the water. Yeah. So there was this period of time where uh, we got a lot of reports of people getting hurt from those, you know. They will knock your ass off a jet ski. I can tell you about it. <laughs> exactly. You do. Exactly. So yeah, so there were a lot of, there was this period of time where it was happening a lot. Every time yeah. you turned around, you know, someone was getting scratched or cut or like you say, knocked out or knocked off your ski or out of your boat. So it was like, okay, let's do a story on it. So first of all, I had never heard of a jumping sturgeon before. So that was exciting. And that, again, that's why I love the job because I get to learn new things. Mm -hmm. So I was excited about that. And then um, to do the story, I had to go out on a boat. So an FWC officer actually took me out on a boat with him to go out there to look for. So even that was exciting. I'm usually, even though I'm a country girl, but I'm still like, ill when it comes to getting dirty with jumping and, sturgeons you know, like I'm, I'm scary when it comes to anything so <laughs> the fact that I went out on the boat that was exciting for me I'm like wow this job has me doing all kind of things that I normally <laughs> would not do normally I would be afraid to go out on the boat but I did it and I was excited about it and then to actually see the sturgeons and I caught them on camera and it she, to see it jump up and it's like oh my gosh my video looked good i must say <laughs> so that was exciting the fact to look at the product and go wow i did that when i got when that story aired that day frank ranicky raved about how excited he was about that story <laughs> so to hear frank ranicky say that it was a good story that made me proud to hear julie montanero say that was a good story. That made me proud. So that's just one of those stories. It was so long ago, but it, it's just, it's so simple and stupid, but it's just so memorable to me. It just meant a lot to me. It was exciting. Right. <laughs> that's cool. That's the kind of thing uh, that's uh, indelible in your life, in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> Betsy, what are your final thoughts and comments in closing today? Oh gosh, I'm just like, I'm tingling from the sturgeon story. I remember, <laughs> I remember when those things were, were 
taking people off boats. It was kind of yeah. scary. I mean, people were getting really hurt. So right. I thank you for um, bringing that story to light, you know, because mm-hmm. I haven't heard a sturgeon story since. Maybe they went away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> people knew to yeah. be careful after my story. That was the part right. of the more people. Help the people. <laughs> I bet you're the reason they put up signs. I was uh, on the jet skis very near, somewhere near Steenhatchie and all these rivers and springs. And there's signs everywhere. It says, beware of jumping sturgeon. And yeah. I'm like, isn't that where caviar comes from? Why aren't they aggressive? Why don't they just give me their eggs? And go down? <laughs> but uh, no. And everybody's like, oh, they will knock your ass straight off a jet ski. And they can knock you unconscious whenever you, yeah. you know, hydrogen bonding. Not cool. So yeah, watch it. Yeah. Betsy, what you were saying. <laughs> Thank Lenitra. I thought this was a really fun show and I, I'm I'm down for a Tallahassee version of the talk or the view. And yes. <laughs> I love it. That happened, Lenitra. Yeah, yeah. I've got, okay, we've got, we're already at our, our minute, but I'm going to ask you one last question. Y'all tell me this isn't good. Um, okay, what would you tell your younger self? Mm like 10, 15, 20 years ago, what piece of advice that you know now that you would tell the younger version of yourself? Mm, Just go for it. Good. Go for it. There are so many moments where I was, should I do it? Should I not? Should I, you know, and just do it. Don't, and oh, and this is a big one. Don't worry about what people say. Honey, stop crying. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Like your bank account, and if those people have not made a deposit Hooray. recently, mm-hmm. if they're not covering your bills, rethink how much weight you give their opinions. Exactly, exactly. And you know, Dana, I think that would be the number one thing on my list. Do not take what people say to heart. Right. There, I, I've cried so many times over things that I probably shouldn't have. You know, it. You know, it, it's a field where people are going to have opinions. Mm-hmm. People are going to talk and I can't stop them from that. Mm-hmm. So I, I did uh, carry this heavy weight of things that I probably shouldn't have carried. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you know better. Thank you so, (laughs) thank you so much, Lenitra Bennett from WCTV and our local Fox News affiliate. Uh, She's with us every morning. Uh, Many of you have uh, breakfast and coffee with her at least, and now you know her a little bit better. So thank you for sharing your afternoon with us. Now that I know how valuable your afternoon time is. (laughs) Yes. And thank you. This was so fun. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you you enjoyed it. We've enjoyed having you. Uh, It was eye-opening. I want to thank Rose Caswick. Betsy Brown, Kia Thomas, as always, our producer extraordinaire, Greg Bird, and again, you, Lenitra Bennett. Thank you so much. And we you hope guys are you. awesome. So honored. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're, we're only awesome because we get people like you to right. come, come hang out with us for an hour, just talking, <laughs> girl stuff. But, it's, but it is empowering to hear from other women who have exciting careers that you've thought about, you didn't even think were available to you, and you've been so gracious to illustrate to us a path towards that. So thank thank you you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. We hope to see every one of you back here uh, next Thursday, 4.30 p.m. for Facebook Live on the Empower Plant. It's the Empower Hour, and you can catch the Empower Hour anywhere you get your podcast right now. Amazon, Spotify, or Apple, wherever you get them, they're there. They're always available on YouTube. You can come to the Facebook website, Facebook page. Uh, It's hard to miss us, y'all. We're here. You can always reach out to me, Dana Brooks, uh, Dana at basicbrooks.com. So uh, another exciting show. I love doing this. This is a high point of my week, and I just enjoy meeting and get to know people like Lenitra better. So we'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.